He's probably up there scheming up plays for Alabama while he's calling the Georgia game kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to My Gotta Podcast. I'm Jim Wood. In this episode, John Powell and I review Georgia's 31 to 23 win over Georgia Tech. We talk about our experiences on Saturday and what stood out to us during the game. As always, remember to check out the newly redesigned MyGotapodcast.com to see our latest merch. And you can follow us on social media at MyGotapodcast. Finally, we'd love for you to check out our presenting sponsor, Oxia Time, at OxiaTime.com. That's A-X-I-A-T-I-M-E.com. Now, let's join the conversation in progress. I guess we're back to the just as we predicted mode. <laughs> Yeah, just as we predicted. <laughs> uh, it was, uh, that was like an old fashioned, clean, old fashioned hate. Like, that's for all the, you know, people who talk about, like, oh, I don't understand, you know, what you don't like about Georgia Tech. And we just kill them all the time and get them off their schedule. I feel like that was, uh, that had like all the things, all the makings of when that game gets crazy. <laughs> It definitely had it definitely had the makings of it. That's for sure. Uh, <clears throat> as soon as we fumbled the ball on the first, you know, on the first play, <laughs> yeah. first first play or two, right? Yeah, yeah. Our first, yeah. That was the weird thing, right? It was like we all rejoiced when Georgia Tech did not score a touchdown on their opening drive. Yes, and then we fumbled the ball. <laughs> and then we fumbled the, the ball. <laughs> yeah, um, that was that was kind of <clears throat> crazy. I mean, you got the you got the fumble, you got the interception, like basically with us. You know, about to about to put put a spike the football in the game kind of thing, and then mm. that just gave them life. So if I told yeah. you before the game, you know, before the game that we were going to have two turnover two turnovers, um, and we weren't going to get any in return, like yeah, there's th- this is probably the result that you would have you would have foreseen. <laughs> yeah, because that was something we talked about, right? Like, yeah, tech forces turnovers, but they give them away. Um, yeah. and we had our chances there, there were, you know, they put the ball on the ground. Um, we had some interception kind of close moments, but I don't know. I t- tip of the cap to Brent key. He had him ready to play. I think they had a good plan. Buster Faulkner was in his bag calling plays on offense. Um, but, and they had some assistance I'll say, which maybe we can get into that later, but the <laughs> officiating was, uh, interesting. <laughs> Yeah, we had to beat we had to beat the refs. Had to beat the ACC officiating. Yes, yes, it was an ACC crew. I know we got that question on Twitter um, a- after the game was over. It was an ACC officiating crew, which is weird because like back, you know, it, it used to be that the away team brought the refs from their conference. <clears throat> um, I don't know when that changed. Although that didn't help, you know, the whole the last time we lost there, nineteen ninety nine, with Jasper saying so that was an SEC crew. So I guess it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it, I guess it doesn't, but, uh, I mean, there was definitely, I mean, all right. So like all day really, like, I mean, there was, there was an egregious like face mask penalty on Michigan, Ohio state game that mm. wasn't called. I, I thought the kid was going to get his neck snapped. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we had, we had the play where it was like a face mask penalty that extended a, a tech drive. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, there was, it was a phantom a phantom face mask penalty that is is not a reviewable call, which is in this day and age just seems kind of crazy that, you know, we can review some things and some things we can't, which are very clearly like, you know, if, if it showcases that it, it's not a penalty that we could very easily pick the flag up and, you know, move on with our lives. Yeah. There is a crazy, there was a bad um, face mask, no face mask call in the iron bowl too. Um, mm-hmm. I guess it was a day for Aaron to face mask <laughs> penalties. Uh, <clears throat> well, what, yeah. what, what was your viewing situation? What What were you doing? Uh, what were you doing for the game on Saturday? Because so you got because you had the Santa session in the morning. Yeah, right? yeah. So well, yeah. So Saturday was supposed to be a day of, of watching football, right? Went to <laughs> actually went Black Friday shopping. Uh, which I haven't done that in quite some time. I usually don't ever go out for something like that unless it's like I know exactly what I'm going for kind of mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. Uh, this time around, like uh, our TVs have been kind of crapping out, and I haven't bought a TV in forever, man. If you haven't tried to buy a TV recently, it's it's kind of an, an annoying thing because there's 
so much terminology that I'm just, it's just foreign to me at this point. Okay. I haven't shopped for a TV in so long. Um, but yeah, I went for a Black Friday shopping just to see what the TVs look like. And then I was trying to get it. I was trying to get the Jim Wood. I was trying to get a Jim Wood TV set up where I had multiple mm-hmm. TVs going um, if I wanted to. Right. Um, ended up getting one. Um, incidentally, was not going to be a replacement for my main TV because um, I think the main TV is still a nicer, th- a nicer TV, which is good. Saying something for those old TVs that you have, right? Right. Um, <laughs> but uh, but now I do have the benefit of having a, a a split screen setup now, so I can watch two two games at once. Or as it happened for most of the day, my kids can watch, uh, you know, what Henry Danger or whatever on Netflix, <laughs> uh, and I can watch a, a football game on on the on the top. Uh, but I was running errands a good bit of Saturday as well. So got the TV Friday. I thought I was all set up. And Saturday came around. And my wife, as my wife, as I mentioned on the podcast, was new in Santa sessions. Um, she had 100 families, 100 families, wow. or, you know, 100 families through um, Saturday and Sunday. So it was like 50 and 60, I think, was, was kind of her split for the days. 200 total kids. Wow! Came through came through the studio to see Santa this this weekend. That's cool. In that process, um, you know, she forgets things, and I gotta I gotta run the stuff over. Our kids were getting Santa pictures at the very end on Saturday, so that was around two o'clock. I made I made sure that that was not going to interfere with interfere with the the watching situation. <laughs> um, yeah, I was running errands, picking up lunch for the, you know, for her. And, you know, she has some helpers that were helping uh, her, my sister-in-law and my, my daughter. And she has an assistant that, she, that helps her through through with her business um, all day long. So I got them and I got Santa. I got Santa. It was, uh, dude, wildest stat. Talk about a wild, wild stat. Santa has only, our Santa has only had Chick-fil-A twice. This was the second time we'd ever had Chick-fil-A, which I thought was just absolutely mind-boggling. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's always eating at the North Pole, John. Yeah, and I mean, that's probably why he's he's got like a, he, he's not actually like, he's not actually physically gifted in the Santa way, if, if you know what I mean. Like, Gotcha. <laughs> he's, he's, he's actually kind of, kind of skinny. <laughs> he's kind of like, he's got like a fat suit that he wears. <laughs> But he has uh, that look, you know. He has that Santa look, right, right, right. It's great. But uh, but yeah, so that was so we I watched on the TV. Um, we were trying to do leftovers. Found out that uh, we thought we had some some rolls, and I decided my, my dumb my dummy head in my mind was like, I'll just make some rolls. So I made some yeast rolls uh, before the game. So I was actually cooking them as as we were kicking off. Um, so yeah. I had to kind of watch watch those, and then after <clears throat> after we got everything cooked and ready and eaten, I took the TV outside and we watched the second half outside. Got it, got it. Yeah, we were around the fire. Nice. We were huddled around the uh, <clears throat> the family room TV at Fripp, so we went down to Fripp for Thanksgiving with all of my extended family. So it was Kim and I, the girls, my sister, her husband, and kids, uh, and Fripp dog and Panda. So my, my parents were there. Um, so yeah, dude, so we did what we did smoked turkeys for Thanksgiving. Uh, my brother-in-law mm-hmm. smoked those and then we did, we did smoked turkey as well. Okay, nice. And then we did smoked prime rib for the game meal. And dude, that, that, is, that is just elite. <laughs> it was awesome. It was really good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we, but we ran right up to kick off like, cause, uh, we, we got messed up with the timing a little bit. Um, so we like literally like finished our food and then the game kicked off. It was like right there. Um, but yeah, it was, it was excellent. we had the bean dip was the snack while we were waiting for the prime rib to be ready. So we had the famous bean dip, um, and, uh, actually made by Panda this time. Um, so that was fantastic. I don't know, man, like we did those things. I had a hat on, we tweeted the official hashtag. Um, but to your point earlier of like, if I had told you, right, like mm-hmm. if I had told you that we were going to hold out Brock Bowers, Lad McConkey, Ra Ra, Tate Rallage, and the official wallpaper, how would you have felt? <laughs> well, you have a certain way that you feel about the wallpaper. I I, I just think it's funny, but yeah, no, uh, missing those players. But like you say that, but like we've been missing time. We've, we've missed 
we've missed Bowers and we've missed Ladd in the past. And, you know, Robert yeah. obviously is not, hasn't exactly been like the, the huge factor, but obviously he is a factor. Now, Tate Ratledge, you know, yeah, like he's he's definitely been, you know, an anchor on the, on the offensive line. But at the same time, like we've been missing those guys and still beat the crap out of people. So, yeah. I don't know, but the two turnovers, the two turnover situation is definitely something that um, it's, it's actually kind of a you know a watch this space on on how slow we can really get. Um, you know, we're talking about slow starts, how slow. I don't know how much slower you can get on fumbling the first play, but um, mm-hmm. you know, it, if you make mistakes like that next week, you know that kind of thing. You know, watch that space. You know, we we need to play like this. This this team is not built to overcome. You know, Georgia Tech. I think you know they had an opportunity on fourth and one inside the you know, fourth and one. Um, you know, inside the goal goal to go. You know, kind of thing. Like, I, I they kicked their field goal. Uh, what was that? That was their that was in the first quarter. It was their second third possession of the game, and they had a chance to. They had a chance to score to another touchdown and go up a, a full a full touchdown on us. I thought, right? Or was that yeah. later? Yeah, in the... no, that's right. You're right. <clears throat> okay, it was seven to seven at that point, and they yes. kicked a field goal to ten seven. Right. So uh, <laughs> I I kind of thought that that was like a, a a white flag kind of moment, like a foreshadowing situation that you know Georgia Tech was kind of pulling a Mark Rick, you know, playing not to lose kind of thing. But it, what's interesting is they ended up like going for it later in the game, which I thought was kind of crazy. Like they, it's like, wow, you 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 suddenly want to go for it, but you didn't want to go for it in a fourth and one when you had been gashing us. I thought that was super interesting, especially with the way Brent Key answered the question during the game because he get they actually dude these in game interviews are getting kind of crazy. <laughs> they're like, I mean, it was in the game. They're like, why didn't you go for it on fourth and goal? Like, yeah, wow. like you're yeah, really going to ask the coach that during the game. During I thought that was game is that was wild. Yeah. I agree. Um, the the end game interviews is is kind of nuts. But so and but he's he I mean and he got pretty defense. I mean like I don't blame him honestly. I still can't believe they asked that. But he was like you know well we had the plan we're sticking to the plan. And I know like we were all joking like when they went to your point when they later went for it on fourth down like w- inside their own yeah it was, I mean, it was definitely on their side of the field but it was pretty far back. Um, I want to say like it was inside of their forty. Um, we're like well are are you sticking to the plan still or did the plan. <laughs> It seems like you changed the plan in the middle of the game, um, which I mean, you know, they got it. So I, I guess it was the right call there. Uh, but that I thought that was interesting, too. That was kind of funny. <clears throat> yeah. But the offense, like, I mean, the offense wasn't so much the problem, I would say, in this game. I mean, the offense, I, I, I know there was the there was the fumble on the first play. So that obviously. But aside from that, the first half drives went what? Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. I mean, we scored a touchdown every other time we had the ball in the first half. Um, mm-hmm. And then, you know, the second half, not to harp on the officiating, but like the, the opening drive um, of the second half, <clears throat> when we went three and out and punted, I mean, on third down, that was the long deep pass to Dylan Bell that was initially r- ruled a catch and was overturned to say incomplete that I still thought that was a catch. Um, still thought it was a catch. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. you can tuck I the mean... ball, like the ball can move. And from my understanding, I don't know. I thought that was kind of weird. Yeah, it seemed it seemed kind of strange. Like, I mean, he had two hands on the ball the entire way. Yeah, it just seemed it just seemed obvious that he had caught the ball. I think he even didn't didn't the guy on the review booth like say like he thought it was a catch. Mm-hmm. Um, like I don't the guy, know. Like the guy, you know how they have that that rules like the rules analyst. Yeah, I can't really remember because it was quite hectic with all of us yelling at the TV, <laughs> <laughs> saying that it was a catch. Uh, in the wood home. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> but like the, all that to say like that. And then, you know, the, the other drive, the drive that resulted in the other touchdown, sorry, the other interception, um, we scored on that drive and it got called back. There were actually two, two penalties on that drive um, mm-hmm. that got called back. Um, there was the, what well, there's a hold holding on Dylan Fearchild on like a tight end screen to Delp would have given us second and five at the tech six. Um, and then we scored a touchdown even after that. Pass touchdown pass to Dylan Bell that got called out for an eligible lineman downfield. Um, God, so I hate that I hate that rule. I hate that rule so bad. If you can get a lineman downfield, like good, good for you. Like what? I don't understand what the point of that rule is. Yeah. So I, I had been saying like, oh, we lost fourteen points, you know, from 
overturn and uh, technically we didn't because we did end up scoring the, uh, the other time when like what it was a milton touchdown run the guy called back um we still ended up scoring a, a touchdown on that drive <clears throat> when that happened in the first half so i guess you could say we got seven points ish mm-hmm. but anyways all that to say i felt like yes we had the fumble um but on the whole i thought the offense looked pretty good i mean i think beck you could probably say was a little off um, the 250 passing yards, every start streak ended. He had what 175, I think, yards passing. Um, so that came that came to an end. But I mean, but the ground game was like ridiculous. I mean, Kendall Milton have a day. We're 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 seeing what was I think John said like we're seeing the we're seeing the Kendall Milton that we recruited. You know, because he's he's fully healthy. Yeah, a fully healthy Kendall Milton has been a, a, a revelation to see. It's kind of like what we were expecting. Yeah, where's this kid been? Yeah, well, he's been hurt. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I hope that that you know that he can maintain this momentum because he you know he's peaking at the right moment his senior year, um, and at the right moment to you know potentially you know propel himself into the next level. Um, he's coming on strong here at the right time. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Um, why don't we do a quick, quick shout out to, to our sponsor, Oxia Time. Uh, so be sure to head over to oxiatime.com. That's A-X-I-A-T-I-M-E.com. Uh, American designed, Swiss made watches, uh, very nice timepieces. Uh, go check out their 2021 and 2022 uh, Georgia National Championship collection. They've got a bunch of other timepieces there as well. Um, so you can get the Oxia Time uh, branded watches as well. Um, they all come with multiple bands. And um, the the Georgia timepieces, you can get an engraving uh, on the back of the watch that comes with it as well. Um, and new now, you can use the code HunkerDown uh, at axiatime.com to get ten percent off your timepiece. So head over to axiatime.com and check. Be sure to check that out. And uh, thanks again to Axiatime for presenting uh, season four of My Got a Podcast. So the defense, <laughs> yeah, the defense. I mean, yeah, like you said, overall. You know, the overall offense offense was great. The defense was the defense was was the problem. Yeah, and I mean, it definitely looked like we we weren't doing anything um, unique. Like everything looked very like base package on the offense too, honestly. And the, but the offense it just like feel functioned um, more. I guess at least was more effective. Um, but the defense, I mean, yeah. So not many blitzes not really disguising anything i think something you pointed out which i think i eventually saw it like once but like i know you texted like have we been doing the defensive line shift like you know yeah. that we usually shift right before it's like we didn't see much of that no um, that. that's like that's like what we're known for right yeah so i don't know i i, <laughs> I know like what was the line that uh, some podcast said recently like the ultimate sign of respect um is when Georgia respects you enough to blow you out. <laughs> so I don't know, like if our lack there was a sign of disrespect <laughs> for yeah. Georgia Tech. I don't know. I think I saw some Georgia Tech guys talking about that. You know, it just it felt like that Georgia was just playing with its food. They seem they seem totally disinterested in in Georgia Tech, which is, you know, as we as we've heard, you know, Kirby has had some, you know, he has had some preparation in for Alabama already so mm-hmm. far. Right. So yeah. Which I mean you'd expect, frankly. Yeah. So anyway, when when you have when you have an, an offense, you know, they had a success rate of 18%, a zero percent explosive rate, 0.4 yards per play, and a negative EPA, negative three point three five eight EPA on third down, Georgia Tech. Those are Georgia Tech's numbers on third down. Yeah, that is absolutely abysmal performance, and it didn't feel like that in as you were watching the game. Um, you know, they had a pretty decent they had a pretty decent day um, <laughs> rushing. It felt like that they were better than us at times running the ball, but like I don't know. At the I'd love to see like some of these stats and some of these you know Doug Stats's numbers you know as the quarters as the quarters rolled on because like it didn't feel like that. The numbers, if you look at like the advanced stats, the numbers didn't track with how I felt throughout the entirety of the game. But if you look at the advanced stats, like we beat the crap out of them. 
Yeah, I mean, they had the yeah, I mean they had 205 yards rushing. <laughs> Right. I mean, that was, that was, and that was the frustrating thing. And it was like, they kept doing the same thing. Right. It was like, which I mean, like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, like they kept running that like kind of jet sweep motion, getting the backs to the outside and it was working. And then when they didn't do that, it's because Haynes King would pull it and run the ball up the middle. Um, he was very effective with his feet. Um, and I felt like our, <clears throat> our young linebackers probably um, over pursued a bit at times. So, yeah. I mean, dude, I mean, it was, it was working. I was impressed. I thought I was really impressed with King. I thought he looked, he looked really good. Um, we saw Scyther show up early <laughs> on that first drive. Uh, didn't get a touchdown though. So I guess that was one of his few catches on the season where he didn't score a touchdown. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, 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 there was definitely a lot of, uh, a lot of frustration. I felt like Kirby was looked pretty like visibly frustrated at one point where there was a moment on TV where they showed him like with the defensive huddle. And it, I kind of got a sense of that. He was like, okay, screw it. I'm going to do it myself. <laughs> like, I'm, <laughs> like I'm going to take over and I'm going to go. She's guys. I don't know who knows uh, what was actually going on, but that's what it looked like on TV. <laughs> yeah. It was definitely, it was definitely a uh, hands on game for him as the, as the game wore on and nothing really changed. So yeah. Um, I thought I saw, I saw, um, you know, shoe, Glenn Schumann, he was, you know, he was trying to coach a little bit, and then all of a sudden Kirby just like went down in in the dirt or something like that, or you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, right. And then I saw I saw Muschamp, you know, Muschamp was kind of like watching from the outside, like you know, the co-defensive coordinator. I was expecting him to be like more verbal and yelling at people and stuff, but like they everybody seemed fairly calm and collected. Like they they knew they had problems, they knew they needed to fix them. I'm hoping that they got some insight into themselves, but like. And yeah, it just didn't seem like we were super. Yeah, John. John mentioned that we were playing really vanilla. Like that we were. Uh, if if you are astute to those kinds of things, my my one you know my one situation that, that was tipping the hand that there was something that was not normal was the defensive shifts. Like there was no, mm-hmm. we didn't have anybody moving along the lines trying to get people to jump off sides and things like that. So. um that was a signal to me that we weren't really interested in showing our hand too much on what we had in the chamber. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think it's like we we saw this team look like what it looked like earlier in the season when we had some of the lesser opponents that we were playing. Exactly. Yeah. And we went this back was to a practice game. <laughs> right. 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 Which is so. just crazy to like what 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 a time to be alive as a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. Like when they cut it to eight, I was like, "Oh my gosh!" I mean, I knew they had to get an onside kick, but it was just so it was a frustrating one. But uh, hey, it got the got the blood got the, got the blood going for us. Uh, it felt it actually felt like clean old fashioned hate. Yes, clean old fashioned hate. Give it to me. Uh, let's see, coaches over unders. Uh, I let's see, you you caught you gained ground on me by one. Uh, you went seven and one on over unders. Um, and I went six and two. Uh, so on the season, I'm now at 60 and 36. You're at 55 and 41. Uh, so moment by moment, uh, JP, you, you, you keep chopping, <clears throat> you keep trying to moment. come back there. But, uh, so thanks again, coach for submitting those and, and tracking them. But I, I feel like one of the most nervy moments in the game was on the one Brett Thorson punt. Would, <laughs> would we have the over on punt returns with a zero punt return, uh, streak, and and uh, I don't know. I guess Don Blaylock uh, helped helped his buddy out, uh, his former teammates out, and the uh, wave signal for that fair catch uh, kept that streak alive. So I thought that was pretty funny. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't. I, they they mentioned it on the broadcast. They mentioned they it did. The, people, the have on. The, yeah, people, people have caught people, on. People have people have figured it out. They've been listening to my got a podcast. <laughs> That's right. That's right. But I will say on special teams. Uh, so was, we had another payday. Um, he continues to be fantastic. Um, <clears throat> could have done without the muff punt, uh, that the muse had, I know it, it went, it just went out of bounds. So ended up being nothing, but it was uh, similar to what was the undoing of Auburn and, and as to how it happened, just, just letting the punt go. Um, so there's that What he, there was another thing with muse where like he, he fielded a kickoff where it looked like it was going to go out of bounds. Um, 
So probably some special teams things to clean up here. Yeah, I was. I, I we're we're back to being nervous about Muse fielding punts. So I'm I'm of the opinion that when Muse starts getting starts getting moved backwards, uh, he just needs to let it go. Like mm-hmm. it just it just seems like it's it's a a dangerous situation every time that he's moving backwards to try to field the punt. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I think is something that, that they need to coach into him is that anytime that the ball is anywhere near the sideline, right. um, to just let it go. Because I feel like that that happened a couple of times where, you know, not only was he moving backwards, but there was a, he was moving backwards to the, to the sideline where the punt was just going to go out of bounds, like let it go out of bounds. And then one of those times was on a kickoff and if had the kickoff going out of bounds, then we would have gotten serious positive yardage out of that so yeah i don't know i think that uh the 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 fielding the fielding of kicks needs to be uh taken because that's something like those little mental mistakes are going to cost you in in this next game so yeah i think i think you're right i think it did happen twice once once he got tackled like it was definitely it was inside the 25 if not inside the 20 um the other one though, he did he he got it beyond the 35. So I was okay with that one. <laughs> the sec- that was the second that's actually the second time. Uh dude, I will say Dylan Bell also had a very nice kickoff return. He did. And I do think we need to give him some some more flowers. Maybe we can talk about happier things and talk like like Dylan Bell. And we talked about Kendall Kendall Milton. Um his his big day and him really stepping up and coming into his own. Uh Dylan Bell too, man. He's been a true like jack of all trades of late yeah someone someone i think dog memes on on instagram had a had a meme of him was it was it champ bailey i think or was it, yeah, it was uh heinz it was heinz ward yeah yeah it was heinz ward uh <laughs> he had the spider-man with the glasses off he was like kind of fuzzy looking like looking like heinz ward and then you put the glasses on and it's dylan bell <laughs> <laughs> dude he, he has looked great man uh man he's he's he has really been coming on uh lately and he's very deserving of some of that preseason hype that we kind of heard about in, um, mm-hmm. uh, in, in, in the lead up to in, in the spring, in the spring lead up. Um, yeah, I would, I would not be, I would not be sad to see him get more, more touches, more opportunities. Um, I think that, uh, I think that he's probably played him into played himself into more opportunities uh, moving forward for sure. Um, I think that Muse maybe is playing himself out of, out of opportunities, unfortunately, the the unofficial official wide receiver of my podcast has not <laughs> been playing very well lately in, at his position. He had one go through his hands. I think was it a was it a third down that he let go through his hands? Yeah, I I don't know how much I put that on him. Uh, I, mean, I mean, he, he did had to jump a little bit, but like yeah, you got both hands on it, dude. And it he did, straight, but it was pretty. It was coming hands. in like a it was a fastball and a little high. So I don't know. But that's definitely something that we've seen happen a, a few times this season. You know, Brock Bauer said that happened. You, yeah. I don't know, but I'm I'm always going to be of the opinion that if you can get both hands on it, you should catch the ball. Right. Um, it was set up well Tom too. Blood, he was he Tom was going to go have one. Yeah. What were you going to say? I would say that that play was set up nicely. Like I think Muse had yeah. a lot of room to operate with if he comes down with that ball. If he ball. comes down with the ball. Yeah. Yeah. And then Dom Dom had a drop too that kind of went through his hands. Um, yeah, you, you you like to you like to think that your 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 playmakers are going to make those catches. Yeah, yeah. We did get. I feel like we did finally get a nice like thrown into the end zone deep ball touchdown. We um, did. It was a nice touch. It was a beautiful pass. Beautiful pass. That was, that was the first touchdown. George's first touchdown of the game. <clears throat> that might have so. been his best throw. That might have been his best looking like throw all all season, right? Like. Yeah, dude, it was, it was the way that, the way that he just lofted it up out there per, in in stride, like perfect. Yeah, it was it was nice. It was it was pretty. It was a pretty one. I don't know. In general, though, I just kind of feel like let's flush this game and move on to. <laughs> yeah, Kirby and them clearly like <laughs> they were flushing it. I, yeah, I mean, you had you had Jordan <laughs> Tech running trick plays like they they were emptying the clip, and I think that Buster Faulkner also had some things to prove. And I think that he proved him pretty decently, but I also think that uh, Bobo was kind of looking at it and saying, "No, that's that's cute," and you know, just just kind of like moving on with his life. Yeah, he's got he's probably he's probably up there scheming up plays for Alabama while he's calling the Georgia game, kind of thing. 
<laughs> like in uh, between in between downs, he's like, oh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just throw it deep to Bell. Uh, I throw it deep to Dom. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, so I guess, kind of speaking of that, the uh, of the next opponent, the Iron Bowl uh, was drunk. Um, See, that, that's I mean, all all of a, a lot of a lot of these rivalry games kind of were really close. I mean, you had Washington, yeah. Washington State was close. You had Alabama, Auburn. Mm-hmm. Our game was you know fairly close for a while. Yeah. Um, I mean, I Michigan, it, Ohio State was Michigan, Ohio State was pretty close for a while too. <clears throat> um, yeah, I, it, it, these are the, the, the that's the reason that you play these these rivalry games. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I saw the BYU Oklahoma State was also kind of close too, right? Is that a, yeah? Is that, a big, that was is over. That a big. Does that classify as a big rivalry? <laughs> no, I don't. Not that I'm aware. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it it had big, it had Big Twelve championship game implica- implications o- Oklahoma State had to win that game to go to the Big 12 championship game uh, and so right. they they were what they were down and they came back and they lost the lead yeah that one was that one was wild we did Kentucky beat Louisville I mean yeah Kentucky uh, yeah I, I will say like as the day was going on and all those games were crazy I definitely had one of those like uh what's our game <laughs> gonna look like kind of moments like is this <laughs> yeah. is, is this one of those crazy college football days um Especially you were, you were munsoning, but you were. I didn't munson. <laughs> I didn't munson. I didn't like say anything to anyone or anything. Um, but it did kind of come into the back of my man, mind, like, man, is this one of those crazy days in college football? Um, which I, I don't know. I guess maybe Alabama hanging hanging on miraculously uh, turned that tide, so to speak. But like on that, like I don't that that last play. Like I don't. I think like my dad said something to the effect of like. The only way Alabama makes this is if Auburn only rushes two, and then they rush two. It's like, what are you doing? Like that was like the only way for that to work. I mean, he had literally Milrow had all day to throw, and the guy was basically all just day like, to figure out backyard football. Exactly, exactly. So I, I don't even know what to think. Like whether I mean, like in the grand scheme of things, I don't think it really. I mean, it definitely didn't matter. Like we were playing Alabama anyways. Um, I guess all it did was keep their playoff hopes alive because I think even I think if they had lost that game, even if they were to to come out on top of the SEC championship, well, they would be in. So I guess big for them, but I don't think it's super. Oh, it, I mean, apparently Mr. Milrow thinks that he he deserves the Heisman. So oh my gosh, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Alabama must be really reeling right now to have to have that kind of statement at the end. I mean, really, I mean, literally their entire season came down to one play. Yeah. Like, that play was successful. Now their season is still, you know, they, they have everything still left in front of them. Had that one single play not gone their way, it would be a very different story in Tuscaloosa. Yeah. I feel and bad I think for that, that is like that is like the quintessential like script flip. You know, we're we're sitting here lamenting the fact that we didn't like beat the stew out of Georgia Tech any more than we did. And mm-hmm. you know, Alabama's over there celebrating last gaff, you know, last gasp uh, heaves to the end zone, kind of like Jacob Eason did when, you know, we were playing Tennessee kind of stuff. Like um I th- I think that it just kind of articulates the the disparity between the two programs right now. That's true. That's true. I mean shoot Auburn and Georgia Tech I don't think are too different. <laughs> Honestly. <clears throat> They're both six and six, right? Right. Yeah. They're both so. one dimensional. <laughs> Neither one of them can throw the ball very well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's a hey good man, point. Maybe that's maybe that's foreshadowing what it's going to look like for us. Uh, off, you know, from a, from a defensive standpoint. So. Yeah. Like I said, uh, these uh, it turns out that these weeks leading up to this SEC championship have been, you know, have been scripted for you know teams that have mobile quarterbacks so this is mm-hmm. another yeah situation where we had that we had that example in front of us so um i hope that they have everything figured out for saturday yeah yeah agreed agreed all right i got some things i want to rattle off uh but did okay. just want a couple a couple of reminders before i do that head over head over to my god a podcast.com we got our store in there you can check out all of our merch uh you will also find links to home field apparel um on my got a podcast now or you could just go to homefield.mygotapodcast.com 
You can always use the code hunkered down to get 15% off your first order at home field. Um, but right now they still got black Friday going on. So you can use code black Friday uh, to get 20% off. Um, and then also with that site update that was obviously updated by working with media. So even over Thanksgiving break, John uh, was able to work with the, the kind folks over at working with media uh, to get our site updated, to reflect that home, home, home field relationship now. Uh, so as always, be sure to head over to workingwebmedia.com slash dogs. That's D-A-W-G-S. Uh, and they will know that we sent you their way. Um, okay. So I did want to rattle off some things because there were some significant things that, that did happen with this win. So that's six in a row over Georgia Tech now. Um, we now have uh, this senior class has won 49 games. Uh, that ties the program record that was set by last year's senior class. Uh, so that's right there. Um, and we, the Georgia Bulldogs now have the longest winning streak in SEC history at 29 games. Uh, so that came, came to fruition as you, and as you pointed out, John made, made the streak over the enemy Georgia tech in Atlanta over a team who was a founding member of the SEC and left. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Nerds. Appreciate you. <laughs> Uh, and I get to put up my Christmas tree now. So there's hey, that. and even better, you get to actually have Christmas. That's right. That's right. It's not, <laughs> it's not ruined. So that, uh, that will be happening throughout this week. Um, with final lights going up, uh, ahead of SEC championship. That's how I, that's how I pass the time, but we, we can talk about that next time we get together. Yes. I don't know. We anything have, else? We have another game. We have another game to prepare for. So that's that, that, these. These are the good old days again. Just to just to reiterate, we are in yet another SEC championship game. It's unbelievable, unbelievable. Six out of seven. That's never been done before. Um, it's the poetry I predict predicted, John. Uh, it had to the- be Bama. It had to be Bama versus Georgia. It had to be. <laughs> There's no other, no other way to end uh, college football as we know as we've known it because it's. Uh, I mean, think about it, man. All those games and all those close calls yesterday, um, they don't matter in a 12 team playoff. Like yeah, it doesn't matter. Like all these yeah. teams are still getting in. You know, yeah, I was just I was just reading a, a tweet by Brandon Zimmerman, um, works over at ESPN and SEC Network. Yesterday's Iron Bowl game was so dramatic because Alabama's national title hopes hung in the balance. Yep. Not sure how it's gonna feel next year when a regular season game like this is played without any national title ramifications, because if they had lost that game. You know, it wouldn't have mattered. It wouldn't have mattered. It wouldn't have mattered. They're still, they're still in. Yeah. Uh, Brandon Zimmerman, like Georgia grad, by the way. He he used to write. He wrote for the Red and Black back when uh when I was in Georgia. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Fun, do that. Fun facts on the on the review episode. I like it. Fun facts. Fun facts. Um. Yeah. Dude, I don't. I mean, get off my lawn. I guess. But that that is that's that's a big reason. I mean, you know, the Iron Bowl is always going to be meaningful, but like that definitely adds to it. Um, it all hinged on that one play, like you said. But I mean, shoot, even like Louisville losing to Kentucky, like Louisville, you know, they could beat Florida State next week in the ACC championship in the 12 team playoff. They're still in, like, you know, like the this stuff isn't going to be, um, it's not going to be as the magnitude goes down big time. But anyway, right. we'll, 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 we can deal with that later. Yeah. <clears throat> we'll see. The, 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 I mean, can you, can you call it the Alabama Invitational at this point? Is it the Georgia Invitational at this point? Uh, I think it's a fair question to ask. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. We'll yeah. cross that bridge when we get to it, Jim. Agreed. Agreed. We can do that. Maybe, maybe, maybe we have, maybe we have that. That's that's what's up for grabs on Saturday. <laughs> among, nice. among, amongst other things. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Uh well I'm glad to hear, glad that y'all had a good uh a good Thanksgiving had your your Santa sessions even even through a little Black Friday shopping so that's that was good and I we uh, we we enjoyed the time we had, we got to spend with uh with our family um it was uh first time we had watched the Georgia Georgia Tech game down at Fripp since I think 2019 it's what we usually do when Georgia's at Georgia Tech but COVID kind of messed us up for a few years there so um that was fun to get back on that track. That's awesome. Yeah, man. Traditions, traditions are super, are super fun. I saw the, you know, the, the Huggins, the Huggins clan, uh, you know, I didn't realize that when I was talking to Jason uh, last week and he was saying that, you know, he was going with his, his dad, his son, and his brother, you know, it was like yeah. a, a guy. I thought it was, you know, I was like, oh, it was the guy's trip, but that's like the seventh, the seventh consecutive 
clean old fashioned heat in an, on the flats that they've gone to, and yeah. you know, of three generations. So like, if you're able to put something together like that, that's that's special. And and to do it during during a time frame when you're winning is is even better. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. All right, man. Well, it was fun. We got through it. I think, like I said, yeah. fl- flush that tape and uh, on to the next one. Get ready to the one we've been we've all been waiting for. Yeah, we got bigger fish to fry, and it's time to fry them. Love it. Hey, man, uh, it was good catching up. I'm glad you guys got home safe. Had a good trip um, to Ponda's famous beach house, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll catch up for the SEC championship. Go dogs! Go dogs! When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply.